field, Wikipedia audio. In mathematics, a field is a set on which addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are defined, and behave as when they are applied to rational and real numbers. A field is thus a fundamental algebraic structure, which is widely used in algebra, number theory, and many other areas of mathematics. The best known fields are the field of rational numbers and the field of real numbers. The field of complex numbers is also widely used, not only in mathematics, but also in many areas of science and engineering. Many other fields, such as fields of rational functions, algebraic function fields, algebraic number fields, and PADIC fields are commonly used and studied in mathematics, particularly in number theory and algebraic geometry. Most cryptographic protocols rely on finite fields, i.e., fields with finitely many elements. The relation of two fields is expressed by the notion of a field extension. Galois theory, initiated by a per thousand verist Galois in the 1830s, is devoted to understanding the symmetries of field extensions. Among other results, this theory shows that angle trisection and squaring the circle can not be done with a compass and straight edge. Moreover, it shows that quintic equations are algebraically unsolvable. Definition Fields serve as foundational notions in several mathematical domains. This includes different branches of analysis, which are based on fields with additional structure. Basic theorems in analysis hinge on the structural properties of the field of real numbers. Most importantly for algebraic purposes, any field may be used as the scalars for a vector space, which is the standard general context for linear algebra. Number fields, the siblings of the field of rational numbers, are studied in depth in number theory. Function fields can help describe properties of geometric objects. Informally, a field is a set, along with two operations defined on that set, an addition operation written as A and B, and a multiplication operation written as A A, B, both of which behave similarly as they behave for rational numbers and real numbers including the existence of an additive inverse AA for all elements A, and of a multiplicative inverse BA1 for every non-zero element B. This allows us to consider also the so-called inverse operations of subtraction AAB, and division A-B, via defining associativity of addition and multiplication, A plus equals plus C and AA equals AC commutativity of addition and multiplication, A plus B equals B plus A and AAB equals BAA, additive and multiplicative identity, there exist two different elements 0 and 1 in F such that A plus 0 equals A and AA1 equals A, additive inverses, for every A in F, there exists an element in F, denoted AA, called additive inverse of A, such that a plus equals zero, multiplicative inverses, for every a a per thousand zero in f, there exists an element in f, denoted by a a. One, one slash a, or one slash a, called the multiplicative inverse of a, such that a a a a one equals one, distributivity of multiplication over addition, a a equals plus. Formally, a field is a set F together with two operations called addition and multiplication. An operation is a mapping that associates an element of the set to every pair of its elements. The result of the addition of A and B is called the sum of A and B and denoted A and B. Similarly, the result of the multiplication of A and B is called the product of A and B, and denoted AB or AA, B. These operations are required to satisfy the following properties, referred to as field axioms. 
In the following definitions, A, B and C are arbitrary elements of the field F. Fields can also be defined in different, but equivalent ways. One can alternatively define a field by four binary operations, and their required properties. Division by zero is, by definition, excluded. In order to avoid existential quantifiers, fields can be defined by two binary operations, two unary operations, and two nullary operations. These operations are then subject to the conditions above. This approach avoids existential quantifiers, which is important in constructive mathematics and computing. Rational numbers have been widely used a long time before the elaboration of the concept of field. They are numbers which can be written as fractions a slash b, where a and b are integers, and b a per thousand zero. The additive inverse of such a fraction is a a slash b, and the multiplicative inverse is b slash a, which can be seen as follows. The abstractly required field axioms reduce to standard properties of rational numbers. For example, the law of distributivity can be proven as follows. The real numbers are, with the usual operations of addition and multiplication, also form a field. The complex numbers C consist of expressions. Finite extensions of QP finite extensions of FP, the field of Laurent series over FP. Where I is the imaginary unit, i.e., a number satisfying I2 equals A1. Addition and multiplication of real numbers are defined in such a way that all field axioms hold for C. For example, the distributive law enforces. The complex numbers form a field. Complex numbers can be geometrically represented as points in the plane, and addition RESP multiplication of such numbers then corresponds to adding RESP rotating and scaling points. The fields of real and complex numbers are used throughout mathematics, physics, engineering, statistics, and many other scientific disciplines. Any first-order statement which is true for almost all QP is also true for almost all FP. An application of this is the Axe-Cochen theorem describing zeros of homogeneous polynomials in QP, tamely ramified extensions of both fields are in bijection to one another, adjoining arbitrary P power roots of P, respectively of T yields extensions of these fields known as perfectoid fields. Strikingly, the Galois groups of these two fields are isomorphic, which is the first glimpse of a remarkable parallel between these two fields. Classic Definition In antiquity, several geometric problems concerned the feasibility of constructing certain numbers with compass and straightedge. For example, it was unknown to the Greeks that it is in general impossible to trisect a given angle. These problems can be settled using the field of constructible numbers. Real constructible numbers are, by definition, lengths of line segments that can be constructed from the points 0 and 1 in finitely many steps using only compass and straight edge. These numbers, endowed with the field operations of real numbers, restricted to the constructible numbers, form a field, which properly includes the field Q of rational numbers. The illustration shows the construction of square roots of constructible numbers, not necessarily contained within Q. Not all real numbers are constructible. It can be shown that, 2, 3, is not a constructible number, which implies that it is impossible to construct with compass and straightedge the length of the side of a cube with volume 2, another problem posed by the ancient Greeks. In addition to familiar number systems such as the rationals, there are other, less immediate examples of fields. 
The following example is a field consisting of four elements called O, I, A, and B. The notation is chosen such that O plays the role of the additive identity element, and I is the multiplicative identity. The field axioms can be verified by using some more field theory, or by direct computation. For example, this field is called a finite field with four elements, and is denoted F4 or GF. The subset consisting of O and I is also a field, known as the binary field F2 or GF. In the context of computer science and Boolean algebra, O and I are often denoted respectively by false and true, the addition is then denoted XOR, and the multiplication is denoted N. In other words, the structure of the binary field is the basic structure that allows computing with bits. In this section, F denotes an arbitrary field and A and B are arbitrary elements of F. One has AA0 equals 0 and AA equals AA. In particular, one may deduce the additive inverse of every element as soon as one knows A01. If a b equals zero then a ORB must be zero. Indeed, if a a per thousand zero, then zero equals a a euro one a, zero equals a a euro one equals b equals b. This means that every field is an integral domain. Alternative definitions Examples the axioms of a field F imply that it is an abelian group under addition. This group is called the additive group of the field, and is sometimes denoted by when denoting it simply as F could be confusing. Rational numbers Real and complex numbers Constructible numbers A field with four elements Elementary notions Similarly, the non-zero elements of F form an abelian group under multiplication, called the multiplicative group, and denoted by or just F backslash or F star. A field may thus be defined as set F equipped with two operations denoted as an addition and a multiplication such that F is a group under addition, F backslash is a group under multiplication, and multiplication is distributive over addition. Some elementary statements about fields can therefore be obtained by applying general facts of groups. For example, the additive and multiplicative inverses A and AA1 are uniquely determined by A. The requirement 1A per thousand zero follows, because 1 is the identity element of a group that does not contain zero. Thus, the trivial ring, consisting of a single element, is not a field. Consequences of the definition Every finite subgroup of the multiplicative group of a field is cyclic. In addition to the multiplication of two elements of F, it is possible to define the product Na. A of an arbitrary element A of F by a positive integer and to be the n fold sum. If there is no positive integer such that, then F is said to have characteristic 0. For example, Q has characteristic 0 since no positive integer n is 0. Otherwise, if there is a positive integer n satisfying this equation, the smallest such positive integer can be shown to be a prime number. It is usually denoted by P and the field is said to have characteristic P then. For example, the field F4 has characteristic 2 since I plus I equals O. If F has characteristic P, then P A, A equals 0 for all A in F. This implies that since all other binomial coefficients appearing in the binomial formula are divisible by P, here, a p equals a a, a a, a a is the pth power, i.e., the p-fold product of the element a. Therefore, 
the Frobenius map is compatible with the addition in F, and is therefore a field homomorphism. The existence of this homomorphism makes fields in characteristic P quite different from fields of characteristic zero. The additive and the multiplicative group of a field A subfield E of a field F is a subset of F that is a field with respect to the field operations of F equivalently E is a subset of F that contains 1, and is closed under addition, multiplication, additive inverse and multiplicative inverse of a non-zero element. This means that 1 A E, that for all A, B A E both A and B and A A B are in E, and that for all A A per thousand zero in E, both A euro A and 1 slash A are in E. Field homomorphisms are maps F, E A F between two fields such that F equals F plus F, F equals F F, and F equals 1 F, where E 1 and E 2 are arbitrary elements of E. All field homomorphisms are injective. If F is also surjective, it is called an isomorphism. Characteristic A field is called a prime field if it has no proper subfields. Any field F contains a prime field. If the characteristic of F is P, the prime field is isomorphic to the finite field FP introduced below. Otherwise the prime field is isomorphic to Q. Finite fields are fields with finitely many elements, whose number is also referred to as the order of the field. The above introductory example F4 is a field with four elements. Its subfield F2 is the smallest field because by definition a field has at least two distinct elements 1A per thousand zero. Subfields and prime fields Finite fields History The simplest finite fields, with prime order, are most directly accessible using modular arithmetic. For a fixed positive integer n, arithmetic modulo n means to work with the numbers. The addition and multiplication on this set are done by performing the operation in question in the set Z of integers, dividing by n and taking the remainder as result. This construction yields a field precisely if n is a prime number. For example, taking the prime n equals 2 results in the above-mentioned field F2. For n equals 4 and more generally, for any composite number, z slash nz is not a field, the product of two non-zero elements is zero since r a, s equals zero in z slash nz, which, as was explained above, prevents Z slash NZ from being a field. The field Z slash PZ with P elements constructed in this way is usually denoted by FP. Every finite field F has Q equals PN elements, where P is prime and N A per thousand yen 1. This statement holds since F may be viewed as a vector space over its prime field. The dimension of this vector space is necessarily finite, say n, which implies the asserted statement. A field with Q equals P n elements can be constructed as the splitting field of the polynomial. Such a splitting field is an extension of F P in which the polynomial F has Q zeros. This means F has as many zeros as possible since the degree of F is Q. For Q equals 2 2 equals 4, it can be checked case by case using the above multiplication table that all four elements of F4 satisfy the equation X4 equals X, so they are zeros of F. By contrast, in F2, F has only two zeros, so F does not split into linear factors in this smaller field. Elaborating further on basic field theoretic notions, it can be shown that two finite fields with the same order are isomorphic. It is thus customary to speak of the finite field with Q elements, denoted by FQ or GF. 
Historically, three algebraic disciplines led to the concept of a field, the question of solving polynomial equations, algebraic number theory, and algebraic geometry. A first step towards the notion of a field was made in 1770 by Joseph Louis Lagrange, who observed that permuting the zeros x1, x2, x3 of a cubic polynomial in the expression only yields two values. This way, Lagrange conceptually explained the classical solution method of Scipione del Ferro and Frana OIS via TE, which proceeds by reducing a cubic equation for an unknown x to an quadratic equation for x3. Together with a similar observation for equations of degree 4, Lagrange thus linked what eventually became the concept of fields and the concept of groups. Vandermond, also in 1770, and to a fuller extent, Carl Friedrich Gauss, in his Disquisitions Arithmetici, studied the equation. For a prime p and, again using modern language, the resulting cyclic Galois group. Gauss deduced that a regular p-gon can be constructed if p equals 2 2 k plus 1. Building on Lagrange's work, Paolo Ruffini claimed that quintic equations cannot be solved algebraically, however his arguments were flawed. These gaps were filled by Niels Henrik Abel in 1824. A per thousand verist Galois in 1832, devised necessary and sufficient criteria for a polynomial equation to be algebraically solvable, thus establishing in effect what is known as Galois theory today. Both Abel and Galois worked with what is today called an algebraic number field, but conceived neither an explicit notion of a field, nor of a group. In 1871 Richard Dedekind introduced, for a set of real or complex numbers which is closed under the four arithmetic operations, the German word Körper, which means body or corpus. The English term field was introduced by Moore. By a field we will mean every infinite system of real or complex numbers so closed in itself and perfect that addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of any two of these numbers again yields a number of the system. In 1881 Leopold Kronecker defined what he called a domain of rationality, which is a field of rational fractions in modern terms. Kronecker's notion did not cover the field of all algebraic numbers, but on the other hand was more abstract than Dedekind's in that it made no specific assumption on the nature of the elements of a field. Kronecker interpreted a field such as Q abstractly as the rational function field Q prior to this. Examples of transcendental numbers were known since Joseph Liouville's work in 1844 until Charles Hermite and Ferdinand von Lindemann proved the transcendence of E and I euro, respectively. The first clear definition of an abstract field is due to Weber. In particular, Heinrich Martin Weber's notion included the field FP. Giuseppe Veronese studied the field of formal power series, which led Hensel to introduce the field of PADIC numbers. Steinitz synthesized the knowledge of abstract field theory accumulated so far. He axiomatically studied the properties of fields and defined many important field theoretic concepts. The majority of the theorems mentioned in the sections Galois theory, constructing fields, and elementary notions can be found in Steinitz's work. Ardeen and Schreier linked the notion of orderings in a field and thus the area of analysis, to purely algebraic properties. Emile Ardine redeveloped Galois theory from 1928 through 1942, eliminating the dependency on the primitive element theorem. A commutative ring is a set, equipped with an addition and multiplication operation, 
satisfying all the axioms of a field, except for the existence of multiplicative inverses a a1. For example, the integers z form a commutative ring, but not a field, the reciprocal of an integer n is not itself an integer, unless n equals a plus or minus 1. In the hierarchy of algebraic structures fields can be characterized as those commutative rings are in which every nonzero element is a unit. Similarly, fields are those commutative rings which have precisely two distinct ideals, and R fields are also precisely those commutative rings in which is the only prime ideal. Given a commutative ring R, there are two ways to construct a field related to R i.e., two ways of modifying R such that all nonzero elements become invertible, forming the field of fractions, and forming residue fields. The field of fractions of Z is Q, the rationals, while the residue fields of Z are the finite fields Fp. Given an integral domain R, its field of fractions Q is built with the fractions of two elements of R exactly as Q is constructed from the integers. More precisely, the elements of Q are the fractions A slash B where A and B are in R, and B A per thousand zero. Two fractions A slash B and C slash D are equal if and only if add equals B C. The operation on the fractions work exactly as for rational numbers. For example, it is straightforward to show that, if the ring is an integral domain, the set of the fractions form a field. The field F of the rational fractions over a field F is the field of fractions of the polynomial ring F. The field F of Laurent series over a field F is the field of fractions of the ring F of formal power series. Since any Laurent series is a fraction of a power series divided by a power of X, the representation of fractions is less important in this situation, though. In addition the field of fractions, which embeds R injectively into a field, a field can be obtained from a commutative ring R by means of a surjective map onto a field F. Any field obtained in this way is a quotient R slash M, where M is a maximal ideal of R. If R has only one maximal ideal M, this field is called the residue field of R. The ideal generated by a single polynomial f in the polynomial ring R equals E is maximal if and only if f is irreducible in E, i.e., if f cannot be expressed as the product of two polynomials in E of smaller degree. This yields a field. This field f contains an element x which satisfies the equation. For example, C is obtained from R by adjoining the imaginary unit symbol I which satisfies F equals 0, where F equals X2 plus 1. Moreover, F is irreducible over R, which implies that the map which sends a polynomial F A R to F yields an isomorphism. Fields can be constructed inside a given bigger container field. Suppose given a field E, and a field F containing E as a subfield. For any element X of F, there is a smallest subfield of F containing E and X, called the subfield of F generated by X and denoted E. The passage from E to E is referred to by adjoining an element to E. More generally, for a subset S A with circumflex F, there is a minimal subfield of F containing E and S, denoted by E. The compositum of two subfields E and E of some field F is the smallest subfield of F containing both E and E. The compositum can be used to construct the biggest subfield of F satisfying a certain property, for example the biggest subfield of F which is, in the language introduced below, algebraic over E. The notion of a subfield E A with circumflex F can also be regarded from the opposite point of view, by referring to F being a field extension of E, 
denoted by n red f over e. A basic datum of a field extension is its degree, i.e., the dimension of f as an e-vector space. It satisfies the formula. Extensions whose degree is finite are referred to as finite extensions. The extensions C slash R and F4 slash F2 are of degree 2, whereas R slash Q is an infinite extension. A pivotal notion in the study of field extensions F slash E are algebraic elements. An element, X, A, F, is algebraic over E if it is a root of a polynomial with coefficients in E, that is, if it satisfies a polynomial equation. With E n, E 0 in E, and E n a per thousand zero. For example, the imaginary unit I in C is algebraic over R, and even over Q, since it satisfies the equation. A field extension in which every element of F is algebraic over E is called an algebraic extension. Any finite extension is necessarily algebraic, as can be deduced from the above multiplicativity formula. The subfield E generated by an element X, as above, is an algebraic extension of E if and only if X is an algebraic element. That is to say, if X is algebraic, all other elements of E are necessarily algebraic as well. Moreover, the degree of the extension E slash E, i.e., the dimension of E as an E-vector space, equals the minimal degree n such that there is a polynomial equation involving X, as above. If this degree is n, then the elements of E have the form. For example, the field Q of Gaussian rationals is the subfield of C consisting of all numbers of the form A and by where both A and B are rational numbers, some ands of the form I2 don't have to be considered here, since A and by and C I2 can be simplified to A A C and by. The above mentioned field of rational fractions E, where X is an indeterminate, is not an algebraic extension of E since there is no polynomial equation with coefficients in E whose zero is X elements, such as X, which are not algebraic are called transcendental. Informally speaking, the indeterminate X and its powers do not interact with elements of E. A similar construction can be carried out with a set of indeterminates, instead of just one. Once again, the field extension E slash E discussed above is a key example, if X is not algebraic, then E is isomorphic to E. This isomorphism is obtained by substituting X to X in rational fractions. A subset S of a field F is a transcendence basis if it is algebraically independent over E and if F is an algebraic extension of E. Any field extension F slash E has a transcendence basis. Thus, field extensions can be split into ones of the form E slash E and algebraic extensions. A field is algebraically closed if it does not have any strictly bigger algebraic extensions or, equivalently, if any polynomial equation. Constructing fields has a solution XAF. By the fundamental theorem of algebra, C is algebraically closed, i.e., any polynomial equation with complex coefficients has a complex solution. The rational and the real numbers are not algebraically closed since the equation does not have any rational or real solution. A field containing F is called an algebraic closure of F if it is algebraic over F and is algebraically closed. By the above, C is an algebraic closure of R. The situation that the algebraic closure is a finite extension of the field F is quite special, by the ardine schreier theorem, the degree of this extension is necessarily 2, and F is elementarily equivalent to R. 
such fields are also known as real closed fields. Any field F has an algebraic closure, which is moreover unique up to isomorphism. It is commonly referred to as the algebraic closure and denoted F. For example, the algebraic closure Q of Q is called the field of algebraic numbers. The field F is usually rather implicit since its construction requires the ultrafilter lemma, a set theoretic axiom which is weaker than the axiom of choice. In this regard, the algebraic closure of FQ is exceptionally simple. It is the union of the finite fields containing FQ. For any algebraically closed field F of characteristic zero, the algebraic closure of the field F of Laurent series is the field of Puser series, obtained by adjoining roots of T. Since fields are ubiquitous in mathematics and beyond, there are several refinements of the concept which are adapted to the needs of a particular mathematical area. Constructing fields from rings a field F is called an ordered field if any two elements can be compared, so that X and Y A per thousand yen zero and X Y A per thousand yen zero whenever X A per thousand yen zero and Y A per thousand yen zero. For example, the reals form an ordered field, with the usual ordering A per thousand yen. The Ardine Schreier theorem states that a field can be ordered if and only if it is a formally real field, which means that any quadratic equation only has the solution x1 equals x2 equals equals xn equals 0. The set of all possible orders on a fixed field F is isomorphic to the set of ring homomorphisms from the Witt ring W of quadratic forms over F to Z. Field of fractions An Archimedean field is an ordered field such that for each element there exists a finite expression, whose value is greater than that element, that is, there are no infinite elements. Equivalently, the field contains no infinitesimals, or, yet equivalent, the field is isomorphic to a subfield of R. Residue fields Constructing fields within a bigger field An ordered field is datakint complete if all upper bounds, lower bounds, and limits, which should exist, do exist. More formally, each bounded subset of F is required to have a least upper bound. Any complete field is necessarily Archimedean since in any non-Archimedean field there is neither a greatest infinitesimal nor a least positive rational, whence the sequence one-half, one-third, one-fourth, a euro, every element of which is greater than every infinitesimal, has no limit. Since every proper subfield of the reals also contains such gaps, R is the unique complete ordered field, up to isomorphism. Several foundational results in calculus follow directly from this characterization of the reals. The hyperreals are asterisk form an ordered field which is not Archimedean. It is an extension of the reals obtained by including infinite and infinitesimal numbers. These are larger, respectively smaller than any real number. The hyperreals form the foundational basis of non-standard analysis. Field extensions Algebraic extensions Transcendent spaces Closure operations Fields with additional structure Ordered fields Topological fields Local fields Differential fields Galois theory Invariance of fields Model theory of fields The absolute Galois group K-theory Applications Linear algebra and commutative algebra
Another refinement of the notion of a field is a topological field, in which the set F is a topological space, such that all operations of the field are continuous maps with respect to the topology of the space. The topology of all the fields discussed below is induced from a metric, i.e., a function, which measures a distance between any two elements of F. The completion of F is another field in which, informally speaking, the gaps in the original field F are filled, if there are any. For example, any irrational number X, such as X equals A2, is a gap in the sense that it is a real number that can be approximated arbitrarily closely by rational numbers P slash Q in the sense that distance of x and p slash q given by the absolute value x a p slash q is as small as desired. The following table lists some examples of this construction. The fourth column shows an example of a zero sequence, i.e., a sequence whose limit is zero. The field qp is used in number theory and padic analysis. The algebraic closure QP carries a unique norm extending the one on QP, but is not complete. The completion of this algebraic closure, however, is algebraically closed. Because of its rough analogy to the complex numbers, it is called the field of complex PADIC numbers and is denoted by CP. The following topological fields are called local fields. These two types of local fields share some fundamental similarities. In this relation, the elements PAQP and TAFP correspond to each other. The first manifestation of this is at an elementary level, the elements of both fields can be expressed as power series in the uniformizer, with coefficients in FP. These fields are not isomorphic. The following facts show that this superficial similarity goes much deeper. Differential fields are fields equipped with a derivation, i.e., allow to take derivatives of elements in the field. For example, the field R, together with the standard derivative of polynomials forms a differential field. These fields are central to differential Galois theory, a variant of Galois theory dealing with linear differential equations. Galois theory studies algebraic extensions of a field by studying the symmetry in the arithmetic operations of addition and multiplication. An important notion in this area are finite Galois extensions F slash E which are by definition those which are separable and normal. The primitive element theorem shows that finite separable extensions are necessarily simple, i.e., of the form. Finite fields, cryptography and coding theory. Where F is an irreducible polynomial. For such an extension, being normal and separable means that all zeros of F are contained in F and that F has only simple zeros. The latter condition is always satisfied if E has characteristic zero. For a finite Galois extension, the Galois group Gal is the group of field automorphisms of F that are trivial on E. The importance of this group stems from the fundamental theorem of Galois theory which constructs an explicit one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of subgroups of Gal and the set of intermediate extensions of the extension F slash E. By means of this correspondence, group theoretic properties translate into facts about fields. For example, if the Galois group of a Galois extension as above is not solvable, then the zeros of F cannot be expressed in terms of addition, multiplication, and radicals, i.e., expressions involving n. For example, the symmetric groups Sn is not solvable for Na per thousand yen 5. Consequently, as can be shown, the zeros of the following polynomials are not expressible by sums, products, and radicals. For the latter polynomial, 
This fact is known as the Abella Euro Ruffini theorem. The tensor product of fields is not usually a field. For example, a finite extension f slash e of degree n is a Galois extension if and only if there is an isomorphism of f algebras. Geometry, field of functions. This fact is the beginning of Grithendi x Galois theory, a far reaching extension of Galois theory applicable to algebra geometric objects. Basic invariants of a field F include the characteristic and the transcendence degree of F over its prime field. The latter is defined as the maximal number of elements in F which are algebraically independent over the prime field. Two algebraically closed fields E and F are isomorphic precisely if these two data agree. This implies that any two uncountable algebraically closed fields of the same cardinality and the same characteristic are isomorphic. For example, QP, CP, and C are isomorphic. Number theory, global fields. In model theory, a branch of mathematical logic, Two fields E and F are called elementarily equivalent if every mathematical statement which is true for E is also true for F and conversely. The mathematical statements in question are required to be first-order sentences. A typical example is The Lefschetz principle states that C is elementarily equivalent to any algebraically closed field F of characteristic zero. Moreover, any fixed statement I holds in C if and only if it holds in any algebraically closed field of sufficiently high characteristic. Related notions If U is an ultrafilter on a set I, and Fi is a field for every I in I, the ultraproduct of the Fi with respect to U is a field. It is denoted by since it behaves in several ways as a limit of the field's fi, AOAS theorem states that any first-order statement which holds for all but finitely many fi, also holds for the ultra-product. Applied to the above sentence i, this shows that there is an isomorphism. The axa euro Cauchen theorem mentioned above also follows from this and an isomorphism of the ultra-products. In addition, model theory also studies the logical properties of various other types of fields, such as real closed fields or exponential fields. Division rings For fields which are not algebraically closed, the absolute Galois group Gal is fundamentally important, extending the case of finite Galois extensions outlined above. This group governs all finite separable extensions of F. By elementary means, the group GAL can be shown to be the PRA 1 fourth fur group, the profinite completion of Z. This statement subsumes the fact that the only algebraic extensions of GAL are the fields GAL for N0, and that the Galois groups of these finite extensions are given by a description in terms of generators and relations is also known for the Galois groups of PADIC number fields. Notes Representations of Galois groups and of related groups such as the V group are fundamental in many branches of arithmetic, such as the Langlands program. The cohomological study of such representations is done using Galois cohomology. For example, the Brouwer group which is classically defined to be the group of central simple F algebras, can be reinterpreted as a Galois cohomology group, namely. Milnor K theory is defined as The norm residue isomorphism theorem, proved around 2000 by Vladimir Voivodsky, relates this to Galois cohomology by means of an isomorphism. Algebraic K-theory is related to the group of invertible matrices with coefficients the given field. For example, 
the process of taking the determinant of an invertible matrix leads to an isomorphism K1 equals Fa. Matsumoto's theorem shows that K2 agrees with K2M. In higher degrees, K-theory diverges from Milnor K-theory and remains hard to compute in general. If A A per thousand zero, then the equation has a unique solution x in f, namely x equals b slash a. This observation, which is an immediate consequence of the definition of a field, is the essential ingredient used to show that any vector space has a basis. Roughly speaking, this allows choosing a coordinate system in any vector space, which is of central importance in linear algebra both from a theoretical point of view, and also for practical applications. Modules over most rings, including the ring Z of integers, have a more complicated structure. A particular situation arises when a ring R is a vector space over a field F in its own right. Such rings are called F algebras and are studied in depth in the area of commutative algebra. For example, Noether normalization asserts that any finitely generated F algebra is closely related to a polynomial ring F. A widely applied cryptographic routine uses the fact that discrete exponentiation, i.e., computing in a finite field FQ can be performed much more efficiently than the discrete logarithm, which is the inverse operation, i.e., determining the solution end to an equation. In elliptic curve cryptography, the multiplication in a finite field is replaced by the operation of adding points on an elliptic curve, i.e., the solutions of an equation of the form. Finite fields are also used in coding theory and combinatorics. Functions on a topological space X can be added and multiplied pointwise i.e. in order to have multiplicative inverses requires considering ratios of functions, i.e., expressions of the form, where g a per thousand zero. Such ratios form a field, called the function field of x. This concept is of use when x is a complex manifold x. In this case, f and g are holomorphic functions, i.e., complex differentiable functions. Their ratios are referred to as meromorphic functions. The function field of an algebraic variety X consists of ratios of regular functions, i.e., ratios of polynomial functions F and G. The function field of the n-dimensional space over a field K is K, i.e., the field consisting of ratios of polynomials f and g in n indeterminates. The function field of x is the same as the one of any open dense subvariety. In other words, the function field is insensitive to replacing x by a smaller subvariety. The function field captures important geometric information about x such as its dimension, which equals the transcendence degree of k. For curves, the function field K is very close to X, if X is smooth and proper, X can be reconstructed, up to isomorphism, from K. In higher dimension the function field remembers less, but still decisive information about X. The study of function fields and their geometric meaning in higher dimensions is referred to as birational geometry. The minimal model program attempts to identify the simplest algebraic varieties with a prescribed function field. Global fields are in the limelight in algebraic number theory and arithmetic geometry. They are, by definition, number fields or function fields over FQ. As for local fields, these two types of fields share several similar features even though they are of characteristic zero and positive characteristic, respectively. This function field analogy can help to shape mathematical expectations, 
often first by understanding questions about function fields, and later treating the number field case. The latter is often more difficult. For example, the Riemann hypothesis concerning the zeros of the Riemann zeta function can be regarded as being parallel to the Ve conjectures. Cyclotomic fields are among the most intensely studied number fields. They are of the form Q, where IN is a primitive NTH root of unity, i.e., a complex number satisfying IN equals 1 and IMA per thousand 1 for all M0. The theory of complex multiplication describes F abusing elliptic curves. For general number fields, no such explicit description is known. In addition to the additional structure that fields may enjoy, fields admit various other related notions. Since 0a per thousand 1, in any field any field has at least two elements. Nonetheless, there is a concept of field with one element which is suggested to be a limit of the finite fields fp, as p tends to 1. In addition to division rings, there are various other weaker algebraic structures related to fields such as quasi-fields, near-fields, and semi-fields. There are also proper classes with field structure, which are sometimes called fields, with a capital F. The surreal numbers form a field containing the reals, and would be a field except for the fact that they are a proper class, not a set. The nimbers, a concept from game theory form a field. Dropping one or several axioms in the definition of a field leads to other algebraic structures. As was mentioned above, commutative rings satisfy all axioms of fields except for multiplicative inverses. Dropping instead the condition that multiplication is commutative leads to the concept of a division ring or skew field. The only division rings which are finite dimensional are vector spaces or R itself, C, the quaternions H, and the octonions O. This fact was proved using methods of algebraic topology in 1958 by Michel Curvaire, Raoul Bott, and John Milnor. The non-existence of an odd-dimensional division algebra is more classical. It can be deduced from the Harry Ball theorem illustrated at the right.